Hello, hello, hello. Hello. So today we are going to do hmm, some of the uh, advanced, basic to advanced JavaScript, which is a, um, a really popular language right now. I, I really like this language. It's wordy, it has a lot of syntax, but overall, it is really, um, how can I say it, popular. Since there's like a lot of libraries, and um, you can use JavaScript for pretty much anything. From like server side, to client side, to building programs. I don't, I don't, know. I don't know about building programs, but... You, you basically can use JavaScript for pretty much everything, every, everything. It's just not that fast. It like a slow, like Python is, is pretty uh, on the slow side since it is too advanced and it's really close to the human uh, language. That's why it's not really as fast. It's not close to the computer uh, language of zero and one. So that's why. Basics so to advanced topics like state management. For the hard parts of the language, for that's hi correct. and welcome to the course. I want to say first of all, thank you. And that it's a privilege to be teaching you JavaScript. JavaScript is undoubtedly the most popular and in-demand programming language in the world and I'm very excited to move you along the path to mastering the language and helping you personally level up your skills and your career as a developer. Right now, I just want to give you a sneak peek of what I have in store for you in the course and what this course is all about. I've tried to put together the best of both worlds to give you the best possible learning experience. I've sought to combine very in-depth and engaging instructional lessons with very hands-on, fun, real-world projects. The majority of the course will be a deep dive into the language. We'll leave no stone unturned. We're going to go from the simple parts, all the way from things like variable basics, to advanced topics like state management. For the hard parts of the language, for example, topics like closures, the this keyword, prototypical inheritance, I've strived for examples and coding exercises to make traditionally abstract concepts clear, memorable, and easy to grasp. And then for concepts that many likely consider quite simple, such as variables and basic conditionals, I've tried to go further and give you a deeper and more thorough look at that concept than you've likely had before. For each of these instructional lectures, I provided a great deal of coding challenges and exercises in every video. They're there to get you thinking, as well as asking and pursuing answers about the language on your own, and most of all, to get you actively coding. For your benefit, I would highly recommend you attempt to do each of these exercises. Sometimes they may be simple questions. Maybe sometimes I'll ask you to pause the video and see if you can apply a given concept we've learned together. Note that getting the right answer to these questions isn't the goal. It's about the effort you put into it and reviewing the things that we've learned. Additionally, outside of each instructional video, there'll be further challenges that you can take to really solidify every single topic we cover and get plenty of practice actively coding and committing your skills to memory. If you really want to get the most out of the course, make sure to do every single challenge that's placed between lectures. There's no replacement to getting your hands dirty and working with the language right, yourself. To, um, then as for the second part of the course, we're going to be putting together all of the skills we've been developing and all of the concepts we've been working with into practice by building two real world app clones that look and function just like their real life versions. The first one will be the app that you see here, Google Keep, which is a really neat note-taking app and is basically like post-its for the web. And wow. also Hacker News, which is the go-to place for anything related to programming and developer news and information. So thanks again. I'm really looking forward to working with you in this course and having you take part in everything I've prepared here. I hope that this course delivers in what I set out to accomplish in making it to serve as your go-to guide 
in becoming an indispensable JavaScript developer in 2020 and beyond. 2020 and beyond. Okay. We should do this. Start using JavaScript. JavaScript can run in many different environments, but in this course, we're going to focus on how JavaScript is primarily used in the browser. JavaScript is an amazing language because we don't need to install anything to work with it. We just need an HTML document, meaning a file that ends with .html, and we can start using it. To run JavaScript, we just need a set of script tags. So let's create a basic HTML document, a set of HTML tags, an opening and closing tag, as well as a head and a body. Assuming you're familiar with HTML, any HTML elements are provided within these body tags. So our script can be put in any part of the document, but most of the time it's at the end of the body after all of the HTML. Scripts are executed right as the browser sees them, and therefore our JavaScript is executed right as the browser sees it from top to bottom. Also, having our JavaScript code afterwards, after any HTML elements that we might have, is essential because most of the time we want to change our HTML dynamically with JavaScript. So how do we create a script for our JavaScript to run in? Well, script tags, like any other HTML tags, have an opening and closing tag. And between them, between these tags, we put whatever JavaScript code we want to run. Let's write our first program, which will simply tell our user, hello world. We can log some text to our console down here by saying console log hello world. Note a couple of things here. This console log feature is going to be useful throughout the course in displaying certain values or to look at certain parts of our program. And second, we're writing what we're logging to the console, the text hello world, between a set of quotes. All text in JavaScript has to be wrapped in quotes for it to be valid. Text in JavaScript like this is called a string. So if we run our code, either by hitting the run code button up here, or by using our shortcut command S or control S, we see our log, hello world. So congratulations, you now already know the core structure of any JavaScript application, whether simple or complex. Most programs are not written entirely between script tags though, only the most basic ones. Most of the time our JavaScript lives in a separate file. To create a JavaScript file, we can name it whatever we like, but it has to end with the .js extension. If we have a project with just one JavaScript file, it'll likely be called index.js or app.js. So let's call ours index.js. That's what we're going to be naming our JavaScript file the majority of the time throughout the course. We'll call this index.js. And then we want to put our previous program that we wrote in it. So we'll copy it, paste it in index.js. And then to still have our code run, we reference this JavaScript file, index.js, using the source attribute on the script tags. So source will be set to index.js. We can remove the code that we have between the script tags since it's now living in code between script tags and using external scripts. Throughout this course, we we'll use external scripts to write our programs. The console yep. log. Let's move on. In this first section, we're going to kick things off by talking variable about basic. variables and strings. We'll talk about the basics. What's the core way to create a variable with the var keyword? And then we're going to talk about how to improve our variables with the help of strict mode, which is a particular mode of running our JavaScript code, as well as a few new ways of creating variables, namely the mm -hmm. keywords let and const, and why they're better as compared to var. We're going to talk about features, the features that they offer, such as block scoping and why that matters. We're also going to talk about strings. Why is all my external is not working? Is it running with bitly? Where is my thing? What? Cold artist G.
creating art club. <laughs> what the hell? And how to make them better. Specifically, we'll talk about a newer type of string called a template literal. And finally, we're going to cap things off by talking about how variables should be named and how you should best name them for yourself as well as for other developers. Oh, and by the way, for these section intros, you'll see two links right here. The first one here is from my personal newsletter. If you'd like even more free resources on JavaScript, like articles, books, and courses, feel free to sign up for that. It takes five seconds. And also, if Twitter is more your thing, you can keep up with me there for all sorts of great... Twitters? I, don't, I never use Twitters. Author and Scrimmer on the cult artistry. <laughs> Let's have my emails in here and on one hand. coding insights to further your career. We've got a lot to cover, but it's going to be a lot of fun stuff. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and dive into variables and strings. Throughout the course, we'll be building lots of mini apps, so to speak, parts of applications that we would build in the real world. In virtually all cases, our app is going to have a user. So let's begin by greeting that user. We looked at console log, a feature which lets us log whatever data we want to the console, strings as well as anything else, every other data type that we'll be looking at. So now let's use console log to say hi to our user with their name. So let's say a user provides their name when our program runs and say their name is John. Again, we need to write this as a string with a set of quotes around our text. The way that we hold on to things in JavaScript is with variables. You can think of variables like boxes. To use them, you just give them a name, and in them, you can store anything you like. Now, to create or declare a variable, we use the keyword var. And afterwards, we give it a name, also called an identifier, which says what value it's going to contain or what it currently contains. And since we want to greet the user with their name, we'll call this variable username. So by default, variables have the value like. undefined, which is JavaScript's built-in way of saying it's empty. And we can see this if we were to console log I, I username to... at this point in time. Uh, we log it. I want to go back and study, re-study this, so that is, get into my head, right? We see null. And in Scrimbo's <coughs> interface, null means undefined in many cases. But be aware that null, the values null and undefined, are not the same. We'll talk about this in more depth when we cover types in JavaScript. Now, what we want to do here is we want to give our username variable a value. Right now, it's just using the default value. In this case, we want to give it the value John that the users provided. And to do that, to give a variable a value or assign it a value, we use the equal operator. We want easier variable of the time when making variables, giving it an initial value. Then we can use this variable however we want throughout our application. So for example, we could simply echo the user's name back to them by passing username to console log. So when we log username, we get its value that it stores John. So let's say our program changes a bit. Let's say instead of having this variable be one that holds the user's username, we want to just hold their first name. If we want our variable to hold a different value, we want to change the variable name to reflect the data that we want it to hold or that it now holds. However, variables in JavaScript follow a specific naming convention meaning a rule that's not required by the language, but one that other JavaScript developers follow to be on the same page. Variables in JavaScript are what's known as camel-cased. Camel meaning... Right. Variables, rules, meaning is 
The Asterisk. first word in the variable is lowercase, like we have here. And the rest of the words Rule number are one. uppercase, like this. The appearance of such names kind of looks like the humps of a camel, thus its name. For example, to update our name variable as first name, it would be written like this with the word first, lowercase, and then name capitalized, starting with an uppercase letter. So this is just a convention. Camel case variables are a convention within the language. However, there are some hard and fast rules that are demanded by JavaScript, the language itself. We must name our variables in a certain way for them to be valid. First of all, JavaScript requires that our variable names only contain letters, numbers, or the symbols dollar sign and underscore. And second, the first character must not be a number. Rule number two. Rule number three is going to be first, first characters must not be a numbers, must not be a numbers. Right. For example, both of these variables I'm going to write right now are invalid. And you can see an indication of as much because of the red squiggly line that we see underneath both of the variables' names. However, based off of these two rules that we just took a look at, take a second and try to answer why these two variable names are invalid. Well, the first, because it includes a disallowed symbol, a hyphen, and the second, because it has a number as the first character. So how can we fix both of these variable names to make them valid? Well, first of all, if we needed a symbol at the end, we could replace the hyphen with an allowed symbol, such as a dollar sign. And we see that our red squiggly line goes away. Mm -hmm. And for the second example, where our number is at the beginning of the variable, we can fix this by putting the number instead within the middle of our variable, say between our two words here. So now these are both valid identifiers. And finally, there are a bunch of words that you can't make a variable with in JavaScript. We already see that there are some words that have a special significance in the language, such as var, which we use to declare variables. These are also called reserved words. They can't be used as names for our variables. And this makes sense. So rule number four. Number four, can use reserve word in your variable, your variables name. Well, for example, we couldn't make a variable with the name var, for example. If we were to run this code, as your should be as your variable name, not in your. You can use like first var. So you get var. unexpected token var. You cannot use var as like a as like a name of your variable. So whenever we get an error from JavaScript, this means that we wrote invalid code and it stops our program. And the reason here is clear. It would be very confusing if we were able to write a variable that had the name of the keyword that we needed to use to make one. So be aware that there are a bunch of these reserved words, which you'll learn throughout the course. But the easiest way to avoid using reserved words for your variable names is through creating variables with precise names about what information they hold. And that skill is one which we'll learn to develop as we go throughout this particular section as well as the rest of the course.
All right, it's time for the first coding challenge of this course. And we're of course gonna talk about variables, which is what you just learned about. The challenge is the following. Fix the variable names below and log them out to the console. Meaning you're going to fix up these three more or less broken variable names, both according to the naming convention and according to the rules for what types of characters you can use to name variables in JavaScript. And then if you need help, you can check out the hint.js file on the left-hand side here. I'm not going to click into it right now in case you want to try and solve it on your own without any hints. And if you find that these don't help, I would recommend you to re-watch Reed's lesson about variables, because the answers are all there. And finally, remember that, that to run the code, you have to click this green button in the top right corner, or you can use the icon in the mini browser here. So go ahead and pause this screencast right now, try to solve the challenge, and then when you either have managed to do it or <laughs> given up, just hit the play button again, and then I... Right, so we are going to fix this. So this is not cam case. It has to use a cam case, which is like... Um, the first word is going to be uh, like lowercase, and then the first letters of the second word is going to be capitalized only the first letters and the rest the next word the first letter of the next word is going to be capitalized the next 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 is going to be, to be capitalized as well so <clears throat> so this one doesn't have a camel case so we do first and then name name doesn't have like cam case so I put in the capital N onto it onto it and then this one we have a uh, an unusual uh, not uh, a uh, unallowed uh, symbol which is like this this right here so we delete that and we are good this one to start with the numbers cannot start with numbers you can do thousand and then you can do this thousand one that would work out well as well a thousand yeah we can do that yep and then we do console dot lab then we do first name there we Copy show name eight thousand. Then we run. Yep, there we have it. It's okay. Name, but Reed taught us that we want to name our variables like this, so that so that it kind of looks like a camel. It increases the readability. As for the second one, this dash right here 